First, Gustave Courbet's socially critical paintings had a revolutionary effect in 19th century France. Now, a major exhibition of his work in Frankfurt looks at the ultimately tragic life of a dreamer, poet, and one of the pioneers of modern art. Gustave Courbet painted one of his last ever pictures at Lake Geneva. He was in exile, sick and sad. It was 1877, and back in France, an old debt of 323,000 francs was about to catch up with him. Six years earlier, Courbet had joined the Paris Commune, the workers' government set up after the Franco-Prussian War. Taking charge of the city's art collections, he prevented a mob from looting the Louvre. But he also pushed for the removal of the victory column from the Place de Vendôme and its re-erection elsewhere. Courbet's call was rejected, but the communards toppled the column regardless. A week later, the commune itself was crushed by government troops. Courbet was arrested for the destruction of the column and ordered to pay the cost of rebuilding it. After all his appeals failed, he painted himself as a dead fish. The revolutionary and realist was one of France's best-known painters. But after his role in the commune, he was hounded by the financial authorities to pay a bill he couldn't afford. At the tender age of 27, he painted a picture of himself looking desperate. But he was actually full of zest. His paintings of ordinary people soon gained him recognition as a champion of political realist art. His most famous picture is missing. Entitled Stonebreakers, it shows day laborers at work. Courbet avoided gestures of working class pathos, such as raised fists or suffering faces. His Stonebreakers faces are obscured by darkness, and he chooses only to show the hard labor of a desperate situation. An extensive new exhibition at the Schoen Gallery in Frankfurt aims to shed fresh light on Courbet and to reveal him as a dreamer, a man who painted internal as much as external reality. His farmers on their way home from market are strangely silent and self-absorbed. Unlike the Romanticists, his subjects are not anchored in nature, but are much more like dolls. He didn't just copy the face of reality, he explored beneath it. His young ladies on the banks of the Seine reveal a deep longing for love and the futility of emotion. Cézanne described the picture as one of the two great paintings of the century. But the public made fun of the canvas, saying it was the work of a caricaturist satirizing girls as puppets. But there's something surreal about the picture. Courbet puts more emphasis on the yearning of the girl in the foreground than on making her composure appear natural. The one at the back is embracing a bunch of love flowers, anemones, daisies, and forget-me-nots. Flowers were a frequent feature of Courbet's work. But unlike the Italian masters, he added them to bleak landscapes and shrouded them in a sinister yet magical light. Courbet saw himself as a bohemian who had broken with the conventions of the art academies and was destined to explore new terrain. But more often than not, his work led him to the eternal wilds of nature. Wherever I am, he once said to a fellow painter, Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot, is fine as long as I can see nature. He was 52 years old when he became a member of the short-lived Paris Commune. Prior to that, he had embarked on a series of what was to be 60 pictures of the sea. He painted from ground level, so the wild waves tower above the viewer. His contemporaries found a lot of metaphor in the pictures of the sea Courbet so loved. But with the government on his back and no money to pay off his debts, the artist went into exile in Switzerland and never saw the roaring French Ocean again. Gustave Courbet died a day before the first installment of his debt was due. <laughs>